On June 2nd, 1998, 10 of the best trucks in the nation gathered in Hollister, California for three days of grueling off-road competition. Join hosts Stephen Cox, Jerry Bernardo, and Tom Collins as they lead us through this journey that pits man, machine, and mother nature against one another. We do not really understand. We don't know what's going to happen. So Top Truck Challenge as a showcase for engineering and as a proving ground for trial setups has become one of those things that we've been very lucky to be privy to and which we enjoy very much. We want to find ways to stop most of them in any given event. So they got to separate the men from the boys. It has turned out to get more extreme every year. Uh, the rigs have also gotten a little bit more capable of handling the extreme. And so that's why it's, it's gotten more extreme. Well, get a good look at it, okay? Last chance. It's not going to look this good again. Three days ahead of us for the most grueling competition for these type of vehicles in America. Hi, I'm Stephen Cox, and welcome to Hollister Hills, California, home of the Top Truck Challenge put on by Four Wheeler Magazine. Now, the readers chose these 10 trucks out of hundreds across the country, and we're about to put them through a three-day meat grinder. Every kind of conceivable competition or challenge you could put a four-wheel drive through is coming up. So get a good look, or it's time to get dirty. Well, what we've tried to do here is create a competition where we can get people from around the country to get vehicles that normally would never see each other to uh, a central location where they can compete in a decathlon kind of event. I'm a little nervous. Kind of wondering what all they're in store for us. We see the water trucks driving by all the time, wondering just how much mud they're going to make for us. It's the challenge for me to make it impossible for them to be able to, uh, to go through our, the course that we set up for them. The, the vehicles that win, though, are always um, unusually well balanced. They are um, pretty good at everything and great maybe at something, but not uh, a lot of weaknesses to expose. Um, that's the kind of vehicle that wins Top Truck Challenge. Not, not too specialized, uh, strong in every way, and with a, a, a driver who knows his vehicle and can let the vehicle strengths uh, come out. Well, I'm from southern Wisconsin, where we see everything from the rolling hills of the, of the moraine parks to uh, deep sand and, of course, the deep mud. And that's, the mud is what I really designed a truck for. Did you ever guess how many horses are under the hood? I'm pulling 525 without the nitrous oxide and about uh, 250 more with the nitrous oxide. I'm going through junkyards and stuff for parts like that, trying to keep it as cheap as I can. Um, I drive it every day, so my daily driver back and forth to work. <laughs> <laughs> what is the story on the hat? I love it. I got it three years ago at a truck show. I never brought my truck to shows because it was never nice enough. So as I, I just bought the hat at the show to keep my ears from getting sunburned, and it just grew on me. Every show I go to, everybody's like, where's the hat? And they know me from the hat and stuff from messing around. It's just, it, it attracts attention pretty much, and it stands out. My dad owned this truck. It was sitting out on a field, and we decided to pull it back out, broke all the rust off, and just started adding, adding, and one thing led to another, like everything. And next thing you know, it's the most expensive thing I own. The RPM range is kind of unique on here. It goes from 850 RPMs, which is low lugging range, all the way up to 8,500. And the engine's built for 10, but well, maybe this weekend we'll, we'll push it that far. If you put straight radios on it, uh, it would handle like a sports car because the only way to get the body to articulate or to move, which is like body roll, is to actually articulate the axles. So on the highway, it'll just hug the corner like it's on rails. My mother actually loves to drive this vehicle. It was just a street driven truck until 1983 and I bought it and did modifications throughout the years, drove it on the road for many years, and then kind of turned it into this after about another 10 years. <laughs> and then it's been in this uh, form for the last three, four years. Off-road it heavily. It took me about two years to build it. 
I got out of my dad's field and started from there. I got two kids and the Corvette got too little, so I needed something else to play in the woods with. And this is our daily driver. We were talking about the engine, and that part I would like to repeat because it's really interesting. You built your own. Yes, I did. Uh, basically, just did all the motor work, uh, just assembly-wise. There is no machine done to it yet, but yeah, pretty simple. I bought it to play with, and I bought it to modify. Um, that's, that's the point. I built it for the narrow California trails. And actually, the, a lot of horsepower on those trails means you usually end up breaking stuff. I probably got the most money tied up in the engine than anything else because it seems like everything for a Jeep motor is expensive. You know, you can build a Chevy 350 for half as much as what I got in that and have the same motor. But I was goofy and had to stay with the Jeep. Basically, I took a Jeep Wrangler frame and I've had to shorten it up and narrow it to fit this body. Um, use a lot of Jeep Wrangler stuff, like the fender flares, the rear end, the front ends, all off the Wrangler. Um, basically, the only thing that Samurai left is the body. Mike Niebuhr and Quagmire took top honors of the show in Shine, just edging out Heath Biggs' Scorpion and Dan Schwartz's Scout. One judge said he gave maximum points to Niebuhr's behemoth rig for its sheer beef. I can't argue with that. Scorpion's unique off-road machine topped the rest of the field in engineering points. Flexibility is an important part of four-wheeling, and the Top Truck Challenge doesn't ignore it. Tom Collins is down at the ramp test where good engineering and flexibility is needed to win this event. The ramp tests the vehicle's flexibility. Behind me, we have a 20-degree ramp, but in past Top Truck Challenges, Many vehicles have maxed this ramp, so now we have a 30 degree ramp. 30 degrees is steep. No one uses a 30 degree ramp, but the top trucks are so good that 30 degrees will be the new standard. In fact, we just had a vehicle, the Scorpion, ramp a perfect 1,000. We built a vehicle that we put something in it called what a lot of people call an AES, an articulation equalization system. And what it is, it splits the uh, articulation between the axles and the body and it just so happens that it it ramps very well and at the same time keeps equal ground pressure on all four tires and there's four pivot points in the front and two and and one four in the back one in the front and they're tied together with what we call equalizer bars and that's where it splits the articulation between the body and the axles now there's no leaf springs or coil springs in here how do you spring this vehicle it is, it has airbags, Firestone airbags in it, and then they're tied together with links that run to the equalizer bars, and they all pivot off the body, and they pivot off the, the rear and the, the front subframes. On the ramp, we're testing to see how well it flexes, and that helps, you know, to see what it can do out in the trail. And we're testing uh, a little bit of everything, and we're just looking at stuff. And we can see, get an idea of how things are working, and how things perform, and how it would do on the trail. Just before it even gets out there. Now that's a good thought. How much can you tell and how accurate is your uh, uh, judgment here and the measurements that you take? How accurate an idea does that actually give you of what the truck is capable of? Pretty pretty good idea. Yeah, it's, you'd be surprised. And not only that, but we get to see things uh, just like this vehicle here. He's up there and he's it's actually leaning to one side. I don't know if he's got some type of something he can adjust on it, but some of them do. You know, they have certain things they can adjust and they can play with the vehicle for certain obstacles. And it's, you know, it's kind of interesting to see what they're actually doing with it. You're an observer of technology as much as anything. Right, yeah, exactly. And everybody's got ideas. There are all kinds of different ones out here. What are some of the more innovative ideas that you've seen? Whether or not they worked is irrelevant. Uh, well, uh, with this guy here, he's got definitely an innovative idea as far as the rear differential assembly. I mean, as far as strength. I mean, he's basically bulletproof. And we've got all kinds of stuff as far as, you know, quarter lifting suspensions and, you know, shock placement, steering, geometry and how it's working with the steering, all kinds of stuff. What makes your Jeep so flexible? Well, it's a uh, we'll start out with basically stock Wrangler springs, which makes them real flexible. They're not real stiff. You got a three-quarter liptic in the rear, which is, we call a goofy leaf, and it lets the rear end drop a little more. 
And also put pivots on the axles to let the spring flex and pivot on the axle. So that and a lot of luck getting everything in the right spot, you know, they twist up pretty good. The CJ5 just dipped the Scorpion in the 30 degree ramp index. Six of the trucks found the more extreme ramp too difficult and didn't place. This is our ride and drive section. What we're gonna do, we've got 10 judges here, we've got 10 vehicles, means we're gonna take 10 laps. You're gonna give every one of us a ride. So without further ado, if there's no questions, we'll get started. Ride and drive is a very important part of Top Truck, since each vehicle is required to be street legal. It tests streetability, comfort, and ergonomics. Generally, the more stock a vehicle is, the better it rides on the pavement. And Richard Larson proved this to be true, as his almost stock Land Rover takes the ride and drive honors from the judges. The Scorpion's frame is the body, so squeaks and rattles were non-existent. With day one in the books, the real action was set to begin early the next morning. We're at Hollister Airport, and this is the acceleration portion of the Top Truck Challenge. You got roughly a quarter mile course, and the pressure is on. You only get one chance. If you blow it all on wheel spin, you're done. Well, obviously, you want to avoid wheel spin. Is it just up to the machine from there? We let the machine do the work once we uh, get off the line, and that's my job, and that's going to be the hard part here. Uh, acceleration test for trucks is not normally a, a, a normal test. So it's kind of out of our uh, realm of uh, operations here, but we're going to give it a shot. You got a ton of horsepower under the hood. How does that compare to some of the other guys? I got about the most here, but that also means it's the hardest to handle. And uh, the smallest vehicle means it gets worse yet. So I'm going to give it a shot because these guys are really tough, and that makes me work that much harder. Vehicle weight play a big factor here? Uh, yeah, it does uh, in both ways. Uh, one, the heavier vehicles have more traction, but then on the other hand, the lighter vehicles can go faster. So you have to use what you have to your best advantage and see what happens. Was it fun? Oh, it was just incredible. <laughs> what a ride. I saw a big smile on your face coming back down the stretch. Oh, yeah, I couldn't have been happier with it. It, it performed real well. It didn't miss a gear or anything. Well, you threw a bunch of money under that hood. Tell me what's under there and uh, how you feel it performed. I think it performed excellent today. Today is today is the day it's been working down for. Uh, there's a 468 cubic inch Chevy big block, Brodex aluminum headed, port fuel injected, and nitrous oxide assisted big block in there. And how much of the horsepower comes from your nitrous bottle? I get about 225 horse boosts, a total of about 700 horse I'm throwing to the track today. Okay, I gotta ask you what your tack and your speedometer read at the end of the run. Well, the tack was just shy of 6,000 RPM in second gear at the end of the run, and uh, I was pulling over 80. Was that all it'll do? I mean, is there anything left if you had more runs to work it? I've got another gear left. Well, it took off a lot better than I thought. What do you think? <laughs> he was flying down the front straightaway. But the question is, can he stop it again, especially with these front tires? I'll tell you what, Tom Collins, let's check in with him. He's standing all the way down at the end. When you speed it up, you have to be able to slow it down. Large tires test brakes to the max. This is the top truck brake test. Quagmire led the way in the acceleration competition as the big engine vehicles dominated. In braking, Dan Schwartz and his international scout stopped almost two feet shorter than the second place Scorpion. It's time to get dirty. Right over there, I'm cruising around all the cool trucks right now, but right over there, we got the event known as the Frame Twister. Man-made objects, logs, rocks, holes, deceiving, mud bog. 
what they're going to do, it's going to be like ideal time. What does ideal time mean? It means they have set a time. It might be fast. It might be slow. But they're not going to tell you. So you have to maintain a constant crawl through there. You get deducted points if you get out of the vehicle, if you come to a stop, if you do this, if you do that. Basically, you want to make it through. But there's some nasty stuff in there that's going to hang me and him up, and he's going first. And he's not even scared. The Frame Twister is our first true 4x4 challenge. It tests articulation, traction, and overall vehicle design. Ground clearance is going to be the ticket here. Well, what finally got you? You started out fine over the rocks. I think it's my wheelbase in between these two logs. It just gets wet, and once you get wet, sink in the mud, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you did a great job getting it out of the rocks. I didn't know if you were going to make it over the first log or not. Yeah, it was a little slippery in there. A little deep, soft, slimy mud. Is anybody going to make it through this? This is deep. All I can say is good luck to everybody. how good it's going to be, but it sure should be funny. Well, your strategy apparently had a lot to do with your right foot. Uh, do you, do you th I thought you had a good chance. I thought I was, I thought I had a decent chance with it, but I started, I wanted to come around to the right, but the truck started hobbling over to the, the ass end went over to the right, so I had to come back to the left, so I didn't have a choice, and I, knew, I was going in the way I didn't want to be in. Why do they call this event the Frame Twister? Gosh, I don't know, because it's broken every one of them so far. Passengers, extra yeah, weight, extra no problem. Weight. Keep the back wheels down. Yeah, you're the man. What did you think of his performance? I think you gave us the luck that we needed. Uh, don't suck up to me. You can still be on TV. <laughs> well, Randy, you've had an hour to watch everybody else. How do you feel now? I want to go home. <laughs> no, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, these big trucks in here. Uh, uh, changed the course quite a bit, but we got we got the line. I got my co-pilot here, and uh, he's been studying the course, and uh, he's a prof professional track builder, so uh, and uh, a lot of luck maybe we make it. Well, I can't be done much better than that. Uh, everybody has a strategy. Yours seemed to work. So, what's the secret? Well, we, we looked at what everybody else did and didn't do that, and this was the only thing left. And uh, we go four-wheeling a lot up in Wisconsin with uh, the PYT club up there, and boy, they, they know quite a bit of stuff, so this actually wasn't too bad for us. Well, not much right foot action involved there. You took it pretty easy, didn't you? That's right, and with this much horsepower, that's really hard to do. <laughs> Talk about your line. You guys went further right than maybe all but one other competitor there. Yeah, the reason we went further right is not because the rocks were better, but because that way we could take just a little bit of an angle off the log. You never want to hit both tires on the same log because then you're twice as stuck. But see, you really seem to have bite even over the second and third logs, and nobody else, that's where everybody else is losing it. Well, we're running some 44-inch tires that I had custom cut, and uh, they're one pound of pressure in each tire, and it just flexes like a glove. Well, you got the secret. Thanks. Okay, thank you. The two Broncos topped the final results page as the rodent exterminator was not a too distant third. Despite getting through, the Scorpion placed outside the top five.
This obstacle you'll never find in nature, but it may be the toughest traction test there is. We call it the tire pit. It's definitely more difficult. They've added water and they dug it out. They dug up all the tires, so it's like trying to drive through a whole big pile of rubber bands. It's, it's amazingly difficult. I don't think there's too much strategy as far as driving technique that's going to get you through this. It's going to be more momentum due to all the water. Well, you're first up for the tire pit. What's the strategy for this event? Strategy. Well, being the first into an unknown pit like this, uh, I don't know exactly how deep in there. Just got done dumping another 2,000 gallons of water in it. Uh, I, I'm undecided whether I'm going to just hammer it in there. Of course, the speed counts here, so I'll probably be more throttle than than uh, foresight here is what it comes down to. Mike uh, Niebuhr with the Quagmire got in there and left some big dinosaur tracks, and it's pretty hard for any car to go through them. It's it's pretty tough. I doubt if anybody's going to make it. If they do. Uh, Hats off to them because, boy, they're, they're the best truck in the tire pit, that's for sure. I think it's getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> the quagmire comes through and he pushed a lot of tires out of the way, so especially us little guys, we're going to have a real tough time. That's why I went ahead and put my snorkel on because it's getting pretty deep out there. In the past, we've had big, heavy trucks suck up those tires and spit them out their wheel wells and not even get slowed down much at all. Uh, it's the light ones that have had a problem. In this case, the heaviest truck we have here is having to win. Mike, what happened out there? We unlocked the hubs to check for, make sure everything was still connected in, and uh, we didn't re-engage them. Hey, Tom, you had a broken front drive shaft. Did you have any hopes of making it through here at all? Uh, not in a sane mind, no. Why did you even bother to attempt it? I didn't drive 3,000 miles to let it sit in the woods. Well, this is a new strategy. The rodent exterminator is going to go through under winch power right away, and this may end up being the winning combination. Tom, why are they uh, getting the winch out right away? Because the co-driver is kind of uh, girlish, I guess. He doesn't want to get wet, so he wants to walk alongside the pit with the winch cable in his hand so he doesn't have to get out when the truck does get stuck. Well, that's a high-speed uh, PTO winch. Do you think uh, hooking it up first would be a good strategy? No. Go in until you get stuck, then when you can't go no further, then hook it to something and pull yourself out. Winching is almost always a last resort. If you can get through under your own power, it looks better, and you get more points that way, it won't slow them down, because the winch isn't that fast. The tire pit's now turning into a team winching event. The role of the co-driver is becoming more important than the driver. The co-driver plays a big part and everything out here, he's uh, directing and, and, and helping the driver out an awful lot. So your co-driver is very, very important. Well, Candy became a real important factor oh, yeah. in getting through. I told her, I said, this, you wanted to come and ride? You know, you got to get dirty, get muddy, get wet. You know, that's part of the game. She's like, let's go. Pretty unique to see a lady out here diving through the mud. Yeah, I'm not scared. I love to do this. I come out with them all the time. You guys actually had a great time. Yeah, we did. We had more fun than anybody else. <laughs> That's it, Lord. Give it all you got. Well, what is this crazy event? This is the tire pit here at Hollister Hills. Yeah. Well, uh, this tire pit is like driving on sponges. And uh, who's that crazy guy in that red Jeep anyway? That red. Uh, I don't know who he is. I think he's a commentator for some sports show. I guess so. Uh, I think I got my own line, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. All right, we're gonna have somebody make it with a technique of just doing it a little at a time with a nice lightweight vehicle. Yeah! You did that like you were walking on soft snow. Yeah, just took my time and the tires spinning slow I think helped it out a lot. Catch the tires instead of spinning on top of them. Well, that's a high five for sure. So the Samurai recovers after a disastrous showing in the frame twister to claim the win. Epperly CJ5 overcame the Quagmire's tracks to play second. Meanwhile, the more powerful machines found themselves at the back end of the results page.
In the past, the mud pit has favored high horsepower and big tires. Here's Stephen with the action. Well, thanks, Tom, and welcome to the mud pit. It's about 150 feet long. They've filled it up with three to four feet of water, and there's not just mud on the bottom, okay? There's, there's like mounds of, well, think of a speed bump underwater. That's what it is. They built these two feet mounds of mud, and if you hit one in your truck, you're going to come to a very abrupt stop. Discretion is often the better part of valor. Going down the mud pit, you need to know when to quit. And it's really difficult with the crowd screaming for you. But if you don't quit at the right time, there's nothing but carnage. Is there anything you'd rather be doing right now? No. Man, this thing is covered with mud. You know, Corey, you have attained near legendary status with your run. Did you realize that? No, I did not. <laughs> that was a good run. I mean, you've almost made it. Yes, I did. I wish I could have, but... What stopped you? The goo. Well, it really, does it get really deep at the very end? What, what was it that held you up? The deepness plus two, I have no water in the radiator. I, the radiator got trashed out in the tire pit. So I ran through with no water in the radiator and it was getting warm and I just decided to shut down. I couldn't see like a quarter of the way into the mud pit. I was just covered with mud and I couldn't see nothing. And I was just giving the hell, filling of it and letting it go where it wanted to go. Strategy, you rode the left side of the pit all the way along. I'm not big enough to get down the middle. You know, so I figured I saw Heath come through there in the Scorpion, you know, he did it real well. And I figured that's the only line I've got, you know, just that and pure throttle. Most of the time there you hear the engine bogged down. That's not because I'm out of throttle, that's because it's getting water. You know, and that water is not good for an engine. And we just gave it all we had. What finally stopped you? You came closer than anybody. What finally got you? The broken axle. Short side. It's that, okay. Yeah, the broken axle, I better get to it. Okay, hey, thanks. Not only do the drivers have to be tough, they also have to know how to fix the stuff that they just wrecked down in the pit. You gotta have arc welders, tools, spare parts. I don't know the names, all the stuff, it's very technical. You ride, you floor it, it breaks, you fix it, you continue on, you persevere, you dominate, you four wheel. Broke my front drive shaft and we sent people to San Jose, like an hour and a half away drive for parts and we're waiting on parts and hoping for them, and we're going to tire the tank trap, which is supposed to be the king of all mud holes, and we're having trouble getting through the little ones, and we're giving our best try, and international routes are going through. It's rough. Uh, you have to learn how to drive elegantly. If not, you're just building the vehicle to come out and stick your foot to the floor and hope it doesn't break. And out here, it will. If, if you've got the foot to the floor, it breaks. There's no doubt about it. They've built it, everything out here so that you know you have to learn how to elegantly walk through it and do it with with a certain pace or else you're fixing it as evidence here today i mean they all have their breaking points or limitations and uh i think we've seen some examples of that today where the driver said hey look my vehicle's not set up for this and rather than just kill it to prove something i'm going to save it for the other events and winch through this or or just <laughs> not do it you know and that's important, is knowing your limitations, your own and your vehicles. And I think that's what we're looking for as much as anything. Anybody can just stand on the gas and go till it blows and say, I would have won if it hadn't blown up. Well, of course. The story I see here is the competitor had failed to make the mud pit. He is drowning in a sea of tears. He wept by being denied victory. That's how important, how extreme this challenge is. Ah! We are vindicated of that. We did find out that we had the hubs locked in. It's just that there is component failure going on in there. We're gonna, there's not enough time to repair it or tear it apart, so we're going to do the best we can today. At the present time, the Quagmire is only a three-wheel drive vehicle, and Mike's doing a great job with it. That's a never give up attitude on Mike's part. He's gonna do it, three wheel drive, yeah! That's what I do! 
talking about? Yeah! You know all I could see. Give me a second. Give me a second. All I could see is the window was rolled up and the the mud was like right at the edge, and I'm just going. Yeah. Oh. Uh, water's rolling in on the inside. I see they've got a hole in floorboard. It's just pouring in. I said, oh, watch your feet. Watch your feet. You know. Tell me this though. Three wheel drive. Yes. Well, I started out with three wheel drive because the locker blew on one of the first events. But I guess it caught in halfway and I, we lucked out. The vibration, the noises inside the truck, you feel every lug catching on the corner. And I, I took this left side here because I saw that it was a little shallower, but up here towards the end, it was pretty deep. Quagmire, PYT team, first one through the mud pit. The man, without his skill, technology, and look at the size of that tire. Don't think that helped? A 48 inch tire, that's what does the job. That's what I put it together for. Yeah, and it, it proves that. once again that size is important. <laughs> size matters. <laughs> Quagmire finished the mud pit with the winning run. With most of the trucks feeling the effects of the mud, it's hard to believe there was one more competition to go, but this is the top truck challenge. Where we're sitting right now, TC, I don't think is considered a nice little trail ride. This is pretty gnarly. I mean, the home viewing audience, without seeing a vehicle going through here, would assume one could not. Well, you talk to some of the rock crawlers, they'll tell you this is a great trail ride. This is what they go all over the country looking for, and they build their vehicles special for this. The name Mini Rubicon is really a misnomer. This is more like sledgehammer or jackhammer. Yeah, well, we didn't name this. Uh, this was here when we got here. Now, we do uh, manicure the uh, rocks, shall we say, to uh, massage them into a more uh, difficult uh, arrangement. But the Rubicon Trail has always been known uh, worldwide. It may be one of the most famous trails as a uh, difficult rock crawler's trail. And so the folks here at Hollister named that section of rock the Mini Rubicon. It is, at 90 feet, it probably is harder than anything you'd run into in the actual Rubicon Trail. I got water in my transmission. It's kind of blow the trans transmission cord out. What are you going to do? Keep going? I'm going to keep going. I think the mud got the better of me. It doesn't want to come out and play in the rocks no more. Uh, it's got my alternator and my starter all chewed up and full of mud and it's not charging the battery and the starter's not turning over real well. So we're just going to drag ourselves out of here and go to the next event, go put a new alternator and everything on it. Well, Rick, that was a great effort. One of the best drives. What, what stopped you? Uh, two broken parts. It looks like I lost a CV joint or an axle on each side of the front, so I'm basically in rear-wheel drive now. Are, are you going to be able to get it fixed so you can continue tomorrow? I have no idea, to be honest. He wasn't the only one wondering if he'd be back for day three, as Dan Schwartz and the scout finished with the top score. Behind me, the scenic beauty of Hollister. But, oh, the sound of a compressor, and off to my left, people wrenching feverishly on things that have just begun to crumple under the pressure of Mother Nature against four-wheelers. This guy over here, he's wrenching in the dirt. Tomorrow, one more whole day. That mini Rubicon we just saw, whoo a little rock crawling. Tomorrow we got the tank trap. Tank trap. Doesn't that sound scary? Talk about Top Truck Challenge a little bit. Is it what you expected, or more so? Uh, it's what I expected and then some. It's a severe event, and seriously, whoever wins it is well deserving of it. The, the truck has taken a lot of abuse, so it's very stressful to do this, so <laughs> as you can probably tell. <laughs> How are you holding up? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Yep, I'm, I'm feeling real good. Um, I'm relaxed. My truck is in pretty good shape, and we probably will be running tomorrow real strong. It was apparent by nightfall that the two Broncos wouldn't be able to go on and compete. For Randy Thomas and his 1967 Bronco, the Top Truck Challenge earned their respect. Trucks are, uh, they're wondering what's going on, that's for sure. And uh, they're letting it know by uh, making lots of weird noises that they never made. And uh, it's all part of this sport. Uh, if it was anything else, uh, it wouldn't be fun.
Well, they call it articulation, and it's especially critical on a tight, twisty course like this. You and I know it as chassis flex, and we're going to measure it right now. This is the obstacle course. It's about speed, maneuverability, a chance to have fun, and just turn it loose. Well, Brett, you got her back together after the uh, water intrusion into every orifice this vehicle has. How much fun was the obstacle course? Uh, it was a lot of fun. It ran good. I was kind of worried because I got like zero pounds of oil pressure right now, and I don't know if it's just the gauge or if I really have a problem. So kind of concerned me and I just gave it all I had and it made it. Glad to take it easy because it's real tight in there and my tires are still aired down a bit from yesterday's events and I never got a chance to air them back up. What sort of money's involved with things that, you know, to get out here and things that you're broken? I mean, is this costing you an arm and a leg? So far this week, I think it's five, six, six hundred and fifty dollars worth of parts busted. <laughs> you think you can bring home the trophy to Jersey? Well, if it, if it amounts to broken pieces, hell yeah. <laughs> Last night, I saw that you were pulling out axles and replacing a lot of parts. Is the Land Rover going to make it for the whole day today? It looks like it will. We were up till about 3 AM last night. Got up at 6 this morning to start again. Um, but yeah, things are looking good. John, what did it feel like to let the big 427 loose for once? Always is a lot of fun getting some air. It's kind of fun to, to not have to be very careful and just take your foot to the floor and see what you can do with it. I like the way you were able to spin the rear end around the corner. That's one nice thing about this. It, it's light enough that you can throw the rear end around pretty good. Like a little sprint car. Exactly. The Scorpion's tight engineering gave it a winning time of 55.4 seconds, which was just 1.3 ahead of the impressive and surprising time put in by John Joling and the rodent exterminator. Otherwise, the larger wheelbase trucks had, as expected, difficulty with the tight course. Man, it's even fun walking through the parking lot here at Top Truck Challenge. Look at this. What do you think? A 1942-43 model? Nah. Sonny Honeckers, he built it about six or eight years ago. The only thing original is the body. But isn't it gorgeous? They call it the Rock Spider. Hey, let's check in with Tom Collins real quick. He's standing down by the tow test. Why pull a dump truck? Because a good truck has to be able to tow. You might have to rescue your friends. You'll probably have to tow a trailer. What does it take? big horsepower and being able to put the power to the ground. That dump truck is full of dirt. It's probably wet dirt. Wet dirt weighs way more than dry dirt. It does, and it's not light dirt either. They put the heavy dirt in there for us. How often do you have to tow people out? Quite often, actually, because a lot of other people break, but these farm equipment don't break, so we're usually pulling everybody out. Every good truck must be able to tow. Right now, we're pulling about a 12-ton dump truck. How are we looking? Looks like we're coming to the top of the hill with the tractor here. We're plowing. We're plowing. That's it. That's it. Farm equipment has stopped. Tom, that was a great pull, especially considering that you have a clogged exhaust system. Thanks very much. It, she did better than I expected her to do, you know, because I think the passenger side bank of plugs is pretty foul because the passenger side cat's clogged. But I was happy with it. She surprised me again. I didn't think she was going as far as she did, but she's still together and she's still going. All right, this pull is kind of short, but you have a 12-ton dump truck full of dirt. You gonna use the nitrous? Absolutely, every bit of it. Right on, we're looking for huge things from the Quagmire boys. Now there are finesse events and there are brute force events, and the 24-ton dump truck is definitely a brute force event. I uh, had to let off about halfway up, you can see, and then it got back on the throttle, and it came back alive, and, and uh, 
It's quite a ride, I'll have to admit. I think the funniest thing <laughs> was the judge is running wide open, trying to slam you to it. You're just like, whoa! And he's going, hey, hey! I couldn't remember if it was the back of this truck or the dump truck that had me past the cones. I wanted to make sure I was through the gate. Well, he looked like he was headed for town, and I wanted to try to get him stopped before he pulled that sucker to town. You know, I, I saw a little roost coming off the tire. I think it was hooking up. Ah, it's just a little bit. I've been told it moves a little real estate. <laughs> we put dirt from here to over there. Oh, good job, man. Well, John, after watching Mike and the Quagmire, one of your friends from Wisconsin, is that a little intimidating? Uh, no, not at all. We've been friends for a long time, and uh, I'm just going to try and do a full pull, and I know I won't do it as fast as he does, and uh, we'll see what happens there. Well, John, that was a great pull, not quite as far as you thought you were going to go. Uh, it was great. I was happy with it. I did all I could do. I didn't break any parts, and uh, we'll go on to the next event. The Quag's power came through again with the full pull, as the Roten Exterminator finished with another second place. With the tow test complete, it was on to the world's premier off-road event. This year, with the vehicles, seeing the way they're working, the damage that we've seen in just the last couple of events, it's going to be real. It's going to be real hard to get through that um, unscathed. And if we do, it's going to be a, a lot of luck. Tank trap has become the marquee event. It's an amazing uh, sight and uh, something that uh, I uh, I have a hard time expressing. I mean, every, every time I walk up and down it, I, I can't believe we're doing it. Uh, and yet, every year, someone surprises us and, and drives right through it. So uh, it's, it's really something that I enjoy watching, and I think it says a lot. I mean, it's completely original. There's, there's no such thing as an uphill mud bog, but that's really what it is. A serious advantage to going first, because after we get through there, there's going to be some really deep holes after we get through tearing it up. And anybody that gets through here before anyone else is going to have a definite advantage. Are you ready for this, Cody? Yeah. Are you sure? You're looking forward to it? Yeah. You know this water is deeper than you are tall. Yeah. You can swim, can't you? Yeah. yeah Tom, right. you can swim. I can swim. Okay, well, look, guys, we're going to let you get going. Any nervousness at all? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mixed reactions. Hit it, guys. You just blew your front tire. Well, that didn't take long. The very first competitor out into the tank trap goes 10 feet down into the tank trap, hits the berm on the left side, and psh, blows a tire just like that. Talk about bad luck. They wanted as quickly as they could to come back, start over, and re-air it. But once the clock starts, you're in the tank trap, and you're not coming out unless you get out yourself. Damn jack won't work, man. When you're standing here, you're videotaping stuff, you watch this guy go down 10 feet and bang, he loses something. Does that make him more nervous? No, no, not more nervous. My stomach's already twisted, knotted, and there's stuff crawling around there that shouldn't be there, so no, no worse than I was before. A boy from Jersey is giving it a good try, but he has a couple of problems. For one, it's posy tractions. What, not so posy? Notice only one tie is spinning. That's not going to work. Also, he doesn't even have a winch. But he's not giving up. He's trying it. He's still stuck down in the first mud hole. That thing sounds kind of ratty, doesn't it? We told you they were nasty. We've got, how many, what do we say, five, six? Six of them. Six mud. This is the first one. He just got through it. It's three to four feet deep in the center. Once you get through the water, though, then you got to try to take wet tires and get up the hill. And it's taken him quite a long time. In fact, this truck wouldn't have made it through at all if he hadn't winched his way out about five minutes ago.
did you think of the obstacle? Obstacles, the whole thing is an obstacle. I shouldn't even have been there. <laughs> but uh, I made it and I'm happy. Unfortunately, you timed out, but you still got to continue on because it would have been a horror show to go backwards. You get to see the rest of the course. Yeah, that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to see what the rest of the course was. And it was, after the midway point, it was a lot easier. Yeah, I got, I got a broken mirror here. But I think the broken mirror is really the, the, uh, the least of the problem. See, Rick was about to call it a day, and you're the diehard. No, I'm just, I'm saying, you know, we still got 10 minutes left, and... Might as well use it? Might as well use it, yeah. There's, you know, no problem with trying to use all the time that you have, really. What's the scoop? Uh, we're calling it. Are you? Yeah, I don't I, Right now, I think I can get down fairly easily. Um, and the engine's running, and if we try it much harder, I think I'm going to burn out the batteries and make a real mess of getting out of here. So the alternator was terminal? Alternator's terminal. Well, probably repairable, but not, not today. Thanks, Rick. Hey, Last second thoughts before you head out. Um, I don't like what I've heard. Winch is packed up now and his starter motor's uh, not going, probably has a dead battery. Looks like time's gonna run out. You made it the furthest. 29 minutes, look, you're 50 yards from the end. Uh, did what I can with a little help. At 10 a.m., the winner of the coveted 1998 yeah, I, Top I, Truck I, Challenge I, Trophy I, was announced at the old school house. First place goes to a vehicle that conquered our ultimate trail. It was second in braking, second in the hill climb, we won our engineering. <coughs> um, just, just a tremendous, tremendous vehicle and an excellent job driving it. If you guys have looked in the cockpit of that thing, um, you probably can't imagine how all that, those buttons and levers work. But I'm talking about uh, Heath Biggs and his Scorpion. <laughs> Thank you. 
There were a lot of good trucks here. You have to be very yeah, yeah. proud to beat them. Oh, it's amazing to be to be voted top truck out of this bunch of guys is amazing because there is some exceptional vehicles in this bunch. Now that you've done this, what are you going to do to top it? I don't know if anything can top this one. This is right now. This is the ultimate. The, the feeling is very good. Heath Biggs and his Scorpion prove that a well-balanced and consistent performance is key to winning the Top Trek Challenge. In second place, the CJ5 just edged out the Quagmire by a half point. The previous night, the competitors voted on which truck they most wanted to own. And there was very little and, surprise uh, as to who would win the award but, known but, uh, as the People's Choice. Lee was a Quagmire. Yeah. So, come back up, Mike. Oh, that's something else. I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> I take really. that real humbly. Um, I think it's very special because a lot of people watch the specialty vehicles and say they're fun to watch, but they, they really don't want them in their garage, and people would say they really would like to take that home. It's, I'm very honored by that. Here's a look at some of the other awards given out at this year's Top Truck Challenge. As the competitors packed up and headed their separate ways, the men that laid it on the line for the past three days realized that this event was much larger than an off-road competition. What I'm taking back from this is that I learned a lot. Um, I learned about a lot about myself under pressure and competition, um, working without a lot of sleep, um, improvising um, on the trail. So I'm taking back a lot out of this. We couldn't agree with you more. 